We're here today to look at archaeology, but not just any old archaeology. We've reserved our attention for only the most fascinating and insightful tales, from lost technology to discoveries that seem to defy any attempt to understand them. These stories come from all over the world and almost every point in human history. We're excited to get started, and so that's exactly what we're going to do. The famous Plain of Jars in Laos has long been a mystery that's frustrated archaeologists and historians. But we are finally solving this ancient mystery one piece at a time. The area, which UNESCO lists as a World Heritage Site, has been covered in strange stone jars for as long as anybody remembers. Now, thanks to new tests performed on layers of sediment beneath the jars, we can confirm that the oldest of the jars was placed there 3,260 years ago. Another barrage of tests has confirmed the presence of traces of skeletal material inside the jars, finally confirming a long-standing theory that they were used in some kind of sophisticated burial rite. Rather than being tombs, it seems that the bodies of the dead were placed inside the jars while they decomposed, and were then buried elsewhere when only the skeleton remained. There are hundreds of jars at the site, indicating that this was a widespread practice in the region, but the practice appears to have been limited only to this part of the world. How and why it came about, and how the enormous stone jars were transported to the site in the first place, are mysteries that remain unsolved. Archaeologists have been very busy recently in Egypt. The Egyptian government is funding lots of new archaeological projects in the hope that the findings will help to rebuild the country's flagging tourist industry. Ideally, they're hoping to find the tombs of more pharaohs. But in February 2021, they instead found the churches and residents of some very early Christian monks. The newly discovered buildings, which are in the country's western desert, were erected between the 4th and 7th centuries. It's been possible to identify them as religious buildings because of the presence of Coptic graffiti on the walls left behind by the monks themselves. There are inscriptions scrawled in yellow ink all over the lower walls of the churches, many of which contain passages from the Bible written in Greek. There's also evidence of a communal hall, where the monks are likely to have met for meals and ceremonies. These were likely the first monastic congregations in the country, and perhaps even the region at large. Life within these walls appears to have continued for around 200 years before the churches were abandoned for reasons unknown. In March 2021, an 11-year-old boy called Jvi Ben David went for a walk in Israel's Negev desert, accompanied by his father. While enjoying that walk, he spotted a tiny object half buried in the sand. His father helped him to dig it out and immediately realized that it might be both ancient and valuable. He was right. This is a 2,500-year-old amulet that dates back all the way to the country's first temple period. Time and the elements haven't been kind to it, but even with all the erosion, we can still easily see the face of the woman represented on the amulet, as well as the child she carries in her arms. The three-inch tall ancient artifact was probably made from a cast in what might be an ancient example of mass production. Its most likely function was as a good luck charm, worn like a piece of jewelry. Historians believe that it was traditional to give such an amulet to newly married couples and pregnant women in the hope that it would bring them luck with the process of conception. Jvi Ben is too young to be thinking about that, but we hope it brings him luck anyway. Does Three Whale Rock in Bueng Khan, Thailand look the way it does because nature made and shaped it this way, or was it carved by human hands? Historians believe it would be too difficult a task for humans to carve rocks like this in ancient times. And yet the rocks look so similar to whales that it's hard to imagine that it happened by accident. The full form of the rocks is best seen from the sky, 
where they look like whales, swimming through the trees of the surrounding forest. In all three cases, there are clearly defined heads, bodies, and tails. Scientists prefer to believe that the rocks have been smoothed off and molded by the wind and the rain over millions of years, but not everyone is happy with that explanation. If that were the case, we'd surely expect to see similar shapes made by nature elsewhere in the world, and yet we don't. Three Whales Rock is completely unique. Experts might not be able to agree on whether they're a product of nature or nurture, but at least we can all agree that it's a beautiful thing to look at. Giving birth is often a stressful and painful experience today, even with all the benefits of modern technology and anesthetic, so we can scarcely begin to imagine how difficult it must have been in centuries past, where no such amenities existed. In medieval England, the best an expectant mother could hope for was to be given a birthing girdle like the one we see here. This yellowed piece of parchment is around 500 years old and belongs to the University of Cambridge. In early 2021, it was subjected to a biomolecular analysis, proving that it contains human protein and birthing fluid. That proves that it was literally worn during the act of childbirth. Prior to the analysis, some historians believed that birthing girdles were more like good luck charms to be held in the hand. One of the less savory facts confirmed by the test is that the birthing girdle was reused several times, so it's probably safe to say that was standard practice at the time. There are obviously severe hygienic issues posed by reusing something like this in such a scenario, but given the general lack of hygiene in the medieval era, it probably didn't make much difference. For as long as humans have existed, we've enjoyed listening to music. It's just that the instruments we use to make the music we listen to have changed a lot over time. If you lived in the Pyrenees 18,000 years ago, the best tool available to you would be a hollowed out shell, like this one. It was found in the Marsoulas cave during the 1940s, but it wasn't until February 2021 that archaeologists finally worked out what it was. The tip of the shell has been deliberately broken. At the other end is a carefully cut blowhole, which still contains traces of red ochre pigment from the lips of the people who once blew through it. Those people probably belonged to the Magdalenian culture. If you're a musician, you might be interested to know that when the hole is blown through, the shell produces a note very close to a C sharp. Now it's been proven beyond all reasonable doubt that this is a musical instrument, we can officially confirm that it's the oldest musical instrument in the world. Most people think that using makeup and face cream is more of a female habit than a male habit, but that's a historical inaccuracy. In fact, it's highly likely that men used such products long before women did. Here's a very early type of makeup that was found in Lijiwa, China in January 2021. To our modern sensibilities, it doesn't sound much like the type of thing you'd be willing to apply to your face. The substance is primarily made from a blend of animal fats mixed with moon milk, a kind of mud that's only found inside caves. The mud turns white as it dries out, thus explaining its name. Liu Jiawa was once part of the vassal state of Rui, and the place where the makeup container was found is thought to have been the district where all the region's nobility lived. That implies that the use of makeup was restricted to the aristocracy. Although the makeup would have served the same purpose as modern makeup by hiding blemishes and imperfections, it would also have turned the wearer's skin white. We guess that must have been the fashion of the time. We've all heard the expression, heads will roll. So let's check out a head that really did. This lonely human skull was found in a deep, hard to access cave called Marcel Lubant in Italy in March 2021. The body it was once attached to was nowhere to be seen at the time of the skull's discovery. After the skull was retrieved, which wasn't easy given its position, scientists tested it 
and determined that it belonged to a woman who died roughly 5,600 years ago. Based on the available evidence, it seems that the skull and its parent body became separated around 1,000 years after that burial, possibly by a flood, and the head ended up being deposited on a ledge in the cave as the flood water receded. Maybe it's inaccurate to say that the skull rolled, but it more or less swam. Most skulls wouldn't detach from the rest of the body so easily even after 1,000 years in the ground, but the Stone Age occupants of Italy often dismembered the bodies of their dead prior to burial for reasons best known to themselves. The most famous ancient monument in England is the stone circle known as Stonehenge in the county of Wiltshire. It's a mysterious site of uncertain purpose, and it's long been a puzzle to archaeologists. One of the site's big mysteries is how and why the huge stones that make up the circles were transported to Wiltshire from Wales, a distance of over 140 miles. A study that was conducted in January 2021 suggests that the mystery might go even deeper than that, because it reached the conclusion that Stonehenge was first built in Wales, and then taken apart to be put back together in Wiltshire. The idea comes from an analysis of the ruined Neolithic monument of Wan Mon in the southwest of Wales. It's been determined that the monument was once a stone circle, made using stones of the exact same proportions as those found at Stonehenge. The ancient myths and legends of the British Isles say that the great wizard Merlin, a friend of King Arthur, ordered giant stones to move Stonehenge to its current location from Ireland. Maybe there's some truth to the legend after all, even if it gets the origin of the stones wrong. Archaeologists try to find as many artifacts and as much information as they can through their own work, but sometimes they get a helping hand. Construction projects and roadworks often turn out to be good ways of accidentally finding pieces of the past, as proved to be the case yet again recently when an ancient tomb site was discovered in China's Hubei province. The burial site, which isn't far from Yautanhe village, is around 2,000 years old. There are four tombs at the site, along with a collection of artifacts, including pottery, iron swords, and other examples of ironware. The style of the ceramics helped archaeologists to date the site to the time of the Eastern Han Dynasty, which began in the first century. A later analysis of human bone material taken from the site confirmed that finding. It's hoped that the site might aid our understanding of the burial customs of the era, although archaeologists will have to work fast if they want to excavate anything further. The road construction process has to continue, and so the tombs will eventually have to be destroyed. Since we've mentioned both China and burial customs, this would be a good time to talk about tortoise-shaped gravestones. This strange practice can be seen all over the country's ancient monuments, including the distinctive Shangong Shangdi stele. There are hundreds of these grave markers in the cemetery of Confucius alone. In most cases, those whose graves are marked by tortoises were elite members of the society they lived in. The symbolic meaning of the monuments is probably connected to the way that Chinese culture perceives tortoises. They're used as a symbol of longevity. However, that doesn't mean that someone whose grave is marked by a tortoise lived a long life. It's more likely to imply that they were such a great person and had so virtuous a soul that their spirit would live on forever. That's just one theory. Another is that tortoises were seen as powerful creatures that could carry great weight upon their backs, so a tortoise on a gravestone might be a symbol of strength. It seems odd that a country that has kept such detailed historical records doesn't know how or why this practice originated, but no such record exists, and the mystery lingers on. The risk of an untimely death is all part and parcel of being an explorer. When you head out into the unknown, you might well find that the unknown does not welcome your presence. The explorers who charted the Arctic during the early 20th century 
were brave and knew there was a risk they would never come home again. That was the fate of Danish explorer Jorgen Bronlund, who passed away during an expedition to the northeast coast of Greenland in 1907. He was the last of his three-man team to succumb to the elements, and his final diary entry has been a mystery to historians for over a century. In 2020, the mystery was finally solved. In his final entry, written in shaky handwriting, Bronlund says that he can no longer feel his feet, it's too dark to see where he's going, and he was forced to leave the bodies of his companions behind. Then there's an enigmatic dark black smudge beneath the writing. It was cut away from the journal and analyzed in 1993, but the technology of the time couldn't reach any conclusions. A 2020 analysis succeeded where that study failed. It confirmed that the smudge was made of animal fat, vegetable oil, and burnt rubber. It seems Bronlin's final act was to try to burn his journal to keep himself warm. Sadly, it was doomed to failure. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!